I think I'll get started. This will be quick. This is just a 15-minute uh, time slot. Uh, you know, it's basically the, the slow associated control channel of, uh, of presentations. It um, has very low uh, throughput uh, and very few um, uh, slides uh, to uh, look at. So. Um, this is also going to look a bit at, at the user plane evolution. Um, so if we think of how is the user plane arranged in GSM traditionally, uh, basically the user plane and the signaling plane are always at the same time. So you have an E1 line and that E1 line has signaling and associated uh, voice channels or circuit switch data, if you wish. Um, and the voice circuit between two phones in the same BTS would traditionally go so you have a situation where you have two subscribers, two phones registered to the same BTS and they call each other. And then the, the voice channel would go from the BTS to the BSC. Uh, then in the BSC you would have a transcoder and rate adaption unit, a TRAO, which uh, transcodes from the uh, AIR interface, which would be AMR or EFR or FR or HR, transcodes that to ALAW or ULAW. Um, and then feeds it from the BSC to the MSC as uh, G711 um, on the A interface. And then you go from the MSC back to the VSC and back from the BSC to the BTS. So you have uh, really the full voice going all the way from the BTS into the core network and going back there. Uh, this is, of course, not optimal, um, but uh, it works fine uh, in low-latency LAN-based wire TDM networks uh, like ISDN, uh, a PSTN that was in place in, in uh, the 1980s and 1990s. Um, but it does not work well with remote sites that are connected over VSAT or uh, other connections such as Maritime as well as um, rural BTSs. And so various vendors have implemented uh, proprietary uh, solutions to work with that, uh, which conveniently create uh, vendor lock-in uh, as uh, those systems are proprietary. But basically when when uh, IP-based BTSs came around, uh, such as Nano BTS or later also Osmo BTS, uh, they replicated that model. So uh, rather than having E1, uh, we do it over IP, but still uh, in the absence of LCLS, which I'm talking about in a few minutes, um, uh, the voice would go exactly the same way. So if you do, uh, uh, whether it's NITB or whether now it's with the split uh, architecture with Osmo VSC and Osmo MSC, your voice call, if you have two subscribers in the same BTS, goes from Osmo BTS to Osmo MGW at the BSC, then from MGW uh, to the BSC to MGW at the MSC, and it goes all the way back, which again is of course not, uh, not um, oops, sorry for that, I have to, reduce the font size and find somehow a level that uh, works with this size. Okay, yeah. So, um, yeah, so we have uh, 3GPP local call, local switch as a 3GPP specified extension uh, in later releases. I don't recall the exact release where it was introduced, um, where uh, we want to change this. So the red line here in this diagram is uh, the how the signaling goes and the the blue dashed line is how voice traditionally would go. You see here media gateways uh, next to MSC, MSC, MSC. They don't have a media gateway to VSC here, but it doesn't matter. So the blue line, uh, dashed line is how it would go. And the, the thick blue line here is basically the shortcut that we introduce with a local call, local switch. And how do we do this? Well, basically from a signaling point of view in GSM, the OUE, the, that's the originating uh, user equipment, so the, this is an MO call and the bottom one is a mobile terminated call, and those two calls are separate calls in GSM, right? Uh, there's no nothing that really connects those two, it's, it's two entirely separate calls, um, and the BSC has no way of knowing that uh, the basically those two calls are related because they have different, uh, uh, all the identities are different, they go over different SCCP connections, so basically only the MSCs here um, would or know somehow, and particularly the IMSC in this uh, particular case, but we can ignore the details, would know that those two calls relate to each other and in fact are connected to each other. And what happens is that basically on the A interface here between MSC and BSC, we introduce what's called a global call reference. Um, and actually the same is also introduced here at the interfaces between those MSCs. And the global call reference then is the same for both calls. So uh, you establish the MO call here, then the originating MSC uh, throws some dice and decides this, this call will have global call ID 2435. 
Um, and uh, then this 2435 goes along with all the signaling, and when the call re-arrives here at the BSC, the BSC will say, oh, uh, I have this call already on the other side, on the other leg of the call, and now I know that this MO call and this MT call basically are connected to each other and that I could establish such a short circuit of the, the voice call. Um, now, you don't want to enable that all the time, but at least now you know that it's possible. Um, but then what kind of problems introduces this? So if we did this automatic, if as soon as the BSC detects that this is uh, two calls connected to each other by uh, looking at the global call reference here and made this connection, we had problems because there's an early media alerting phase where of course you want to have an alerting tone that's generated at the core network at the MSC here on the right hand side. Um, also, playback of voice announcements, something like, oh, your prepaid account has gone below limit or is about to expire or something. How do you inject this here from the core network if your voice channel is established point to point here on the, on, on the, on the RAND side? So this is a problem area. Then, of course, some people care about lawful interception. Um, for whatever reason, and um, uh, then uh, that's a problem for them if uh, the lawful interception interfaces and everything happens at the MSC level um, and uh, the call is already looped at the, at the RAN side, at the BSC or even at the BTS side, uh, you don't see that voice. Um, and then also you have handover implications. Uh, let's say you do uh, some handovers where there's intra-BSC, inter-BSC, inter-MSC and so on. Um, as soon as you hand over, of course, all the elements in the new chain also need to support LCLS. If they don't, you need to fall back to the old behavior and you need to discover that during all the different handover cases. So there are some problem areas that need to be resolved in local call, local switch. Now, um, early media uh, basically looks like this. This is again a, a diagram where the, the green indicates the control plane that goes basically through all the, the, the MSCs. Here again, we have uh, uh, three MSCs in the chain, the O MSC for the originating side, the T MSC for the terminating side, and the I, I think, for interworking in the center. And um, so basically what they put in is sort of a switch here in the voice plane uh, at the, in the BSC or in the media gateway next to the BSC. Uh, they just say it's in the BSS, so it can be implemented wherever. And um, basically you can establish the signaling this way, um, but then uh, there's this, uh, um, uh, this uh, switch here and uh, the early media comes from this MSC, it comes from the core network and gets injected here to the originating user equipment and it's not connected anywhere else. So originally when you start the call, you still get the media from the core network um, and then later on, uh, basically you introduce this short circuit here and there's some signaling uh, uh, involved in that. So basically you start in the classic way with vo all voice going and coming from the core network but then there can be some signaling by the MSC which basically uh, closes the loop here, the, the short circuit in, in the BSS and enables the local call, local switch feature. And uh, that is done actually different, so it's not just a binary switch but you can say well um, uh, for each of the two directions, from A to B and B to A subscriber, you can independently configure this. So you can say, well, receive audio coming local, but transmit to the core network. Or you can even do things which they call bycasting, which basically means loop the audio local, but also send a copy to the core network. And you can guess what that's used for. Um, so these are the features here. And uh, these diagrams are, as you know, I never draw diagrams. These are all taken from the three GPP specs. Uh, it's actually quite funny that in modern specs they have such colorful uh, diagrams in the specs. This is quite far away from uh, uh, how the old specs look like. Um, so uh, this is how a tone or an announcement is being played. So again, we have here the originating MSC, the terminating MSC, the interworking MSC. We have the co-located media gateways here. Here we have the two user equipments at the bottom and the, the BSS uh, that's local call, local switch capable. So basically, um, we have the uh, um, we, we have uh, some announcement in red that's uh, generated at the MSC here, which is sent to uh, the BSS, and then the BSS here. Uh, can interrupt the normal voice, like uh, normally the voice would come from here, go to here and go back in the local call, local switch, but it can interrupt that loop temporarily and rather inject audio coming from the core network side. So in the middle of your call basically, the media gateway in the BSS can be instructed to cut the local loop uh, and instead play an announcement that's being sent from the, from the core network side and that could be your, well, your prepaid account is about to expire kind of thing. 
So you basically have this uh, switching capability here and some signaling messages that um, uh, will do this. So uh, it's LCLS is negotiated and all calls start non-locally switched and then only over time. Uh, uh, between the MSCs, uh, the, the can be negotiated and uh, established. And uh, there's uh, LCLS negotiation requests and response and the configuration preference information element. These are new information elements that have been added to ISAP, to BIC, that's the bearer independent call control, and to SIPI, which is the uh, the the SIP uh, interworking uh, way how modern uh, 3GPP core networks use SIP uh, rather than ISAP uh, between them for call control. So all of these protocols have been extended by these additional information elements in the core network. Um, and the results can basically be, well, either don't do LCLS, is the classic non-local case, or you can say connect both ways which uh, in, in the BSS, which is called basic LCLS, uh, the complete local loop. And then you can also do this bycasting. So you can connect the local loop in the VSS and bycast the uplink to the core network. Or you can say, uh, send access downlink from the core network. And then even you can combine or replace the local downlink data. So there's even capability so you can mix the, the local voice coming from the phone and the voice or the audio coming from the core network. So you can mix those two voice channels with each other. Um, there are uh, uh, all kinds of combination modes in there. For the A interface, this means uh, that uh, we have a couple of additional information elements and messages. During call establishment, uh, we have a new, uh, in the BSS map assignment request, we have this new global call reference field, which tells us to which call this, uh, this uh, uh, connection belongs. Um, and then we have an LCLS config information element by which the core network tells us what's the configuration, what is permitted at all in terms of local call, local switch. And in the assignment complete from the uh, BSC to the MSC, uh, we send back a status, sort of what was the result of uh, trying to enable uh, um, LCLS here. And during handover, again, we have in the handover complete, we have this BSS status. So the MSC again gets notified uh, after a handover what's the status of local call, local switch. And then at any time, there can be uh, uh, the, the MSS, the MSC can send uh, an LCLS connection control to interrupt or, or reroute the audio as needed. And also if the BSS changes autonomically, because for example, if there is a handover between two uh, BTSs inside the BSC, normally the MSC doesn't know about this, but using this notification, then uh, let's say the new cell does not support LCLS, but the old one did, then you need to break the loop and the BSC can tell the MSC, well, LCLS has been broken now after handover by means of this LCLS notification. So what do we do in the Osmocom side? Uh, uh, we plan to support a minimal setup without this bycasting feature, which is only needed for lawful interception anyway. Um, so uh, what do we need to do in Osmo BSC? We need to add support for those additional information elements, those uh, two or three information elements. Um, and uh, then uh, if, for example, the MSC changes the LCLS configuration, we will translate that into MGCP commands uh, to change the media gateway. Because in the end, what we need to do, if the MSC tells us, well, switch from the local loop to the remote loop or back, uh, basically it's reconnecting the RTP audio, and that's exactly what the media gateway does. So we will basically do an MDCX, a modify connection, which will change the, the, uh, the destination of the RTP stream based on uh, LCLS. Um, and the development we will do uh, is uh, test-driven, so we first write the tests for these new messages and information elements in TTCN, um, and then uh, we run that against Osmo BSC until uh, the feature is uh, supported. And in Osmo MSC, um, uh, we uh, assume that we only have a single Osmo MSC and not a complex network with multiple MSCs, uh, where uh, we basically will just have some VTY config to tell the MSC if LCLS should be permitted or not, and then it will always try to use LCLS whenever possible um, on the on the A interface side. Yeah, there is lots of uh, spec references here uh, on if you want to read up more details. This is the the report uh, 232284, which basically is a, a, a report that 3GPP wrote before creating LCLS on on how uh, this should be done. Uh, then we have uh, the work items, uh, uh, the, the WI. Uh, they basically tell you all the different changes they made in the various specs in order to introduce this new feature. Um, we have also a, a wiki page in the Osmocom wiki, and we have two issues to track the progress. Also, again, one for the core network side, one for the radio access network side. 
And that's basically it. Uh, in a nutshell, what LCL is, is and what we will do about it. Questions? Okay. No questions? Ah, there is. Okay. So, is in the Osmo plan, are you is are you planning to implement local call local switch on the BTS side only, or only within the BSS? Well, the the BTS itself doesn't really need any support for it. Uh, let's look at this. Uh, basically, I mean, the BTS sends its audio to wherever it's instructed to. Um, on the uh, on on the RTP side, um, and um, uh, we could uh, go as far as to basically really creating this loop here between the BTSs. I think that's what your question was. My assumption was that basically we do it at the media gateway here only, so that basically the RTP would always go to the media gateway here, and then from the media gateway at the BSC it goes back, because the assumption is that uh, if you have a, a satellite set up with Osmocom components, you have the satellite link on the A side and not on the ABIS side. ABIS-based satellite backhaul is stupid and is only done by legacy equipment, where, you, where the BSC is an expensive piece of equipment that you cannot put at every site. Um, but with Osmo BSC, I think the cost is uh, rather low. Um, uh, so uh, you just put Osmo BSC everywhere and you have your satellite backhaul here. So uh, there's no issue. Yeah, yeah. I, n I, I kind of asked because we'd, we'd have some situations where actually the ABIS link is not as nice as one might want. And so if there was two calls on the one BTS, it would be nice if the... Um, RTP stream wasn't actually going anywhere at all. It's yeah. possible to do, but it would require uh, more uh, co logic in the BSC. So, I mean, it's it's easy to do as a future extension, but the uh, primary goal is to remove uh, the backhaul from here now, um, make it go through that media gateway, and if you want to go further, then it's... Um, I mean, the BSC knows all the... the um, which uh, two logical channels are involved in the call. It knows the IP addresses and port numbers associated with the two um, RTP sources and sinks at the BTS. And it could as well basically completely delete uh, or uh, mute the connection on the media gateway side and then tell the BTS over RSL to connect to there and, and back here. With Osmo BTS at least that would work, with Nano BTSs it would not. Uh, because uh, they uh, don't like uh, changes of the uh, SSRC uh, during an ongoing call. Um, so the, the, syn the synchronization source of, of uh, RTP must not change during a call, so they would not, uh, as far as I understand or I know, would not work, but with Osmo BTS it's possible. It's uh, just some more work in the VC.